Hello everyone, my name is Droogie Forever, and today we are playing a game called Cold Hearts. Now this is only the demo, mind you, so it's not the full game. Um, contains the prologue of Cold Hearts, a work in progress. Have you ever felt like you don't belong, unable to find your place in this strange world? Surrounded by people you don't connect with, doing daily tasks that don't seem to fit you. Hell, even picking groceries and clothes based on what you think a decent human being would choose. Living the life of an entirely different person with no way to change it. This is my reality since father died. I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't ready for anything except a night spent lying on the couch with a bag of chips, watching TV, or week-long video game grinding sessions. We only had each other, and Father made sure I had both my wallet and fridge full. He owned a shop with household appliances, and I, well, I helped him out a few times, but I wasn't really interested in having a job. I wasn't paying attention when he tried to teach me how to pay taxes or how to run your own company. I didn't even notice when he became sick. Suddenly, everything changed. It felt like I was being slapped in the face with reality, sadness, grief, guilt. I went through all those phases trying to accept the fact that he's gone forever. But I never really did. Maybe that's why I try to live his life now. I took over his company. Every morning, I wake up, eat a complete breakfast, and go to work. Selling washing machines, fridges, toasters, everything just as it should be. Except for those sleepless nights. When I try to sleep, dark thoughts haunt me, showing me the worst moments of my life, revealing endless anxieties and my deepest fears. I tried counting sheep, but the only thing that really helps is a quick trip to the kitchen to grab something sweet from my fridge. And so we live together in the harmony and balance of a regular schedule, me and my fridge. Every night, I come to visit her to ease my worried mind, and then I go back to sleep. Except... For one night. The night when my fridge came to me. Who, who's there? Silence. I'm sure I heard a weird metallic stomping that woke me from another restless dream. My vision is still blurry after such a sudden awakening. I rub my eyes quickly to find the source of the sound, and suddenly, I see it. It's... it's just me. I'm not sure what's more bizarre, a fridge standing right in front of my bed or hearing a female voice in my bedroom. Act cautious. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Stop hiding behind the fridge, thief. To my surprise, the reply I get is sobbing in the same high-pitched female voice I heard before. Oh dear, am I dealing with a psycho here? Hey, just tell me what you want and let's get this over with. I just wanted to help make it easier for Master tonight here. Suddenly the doors of the fridge open, casting a beam of light, driving away the shadows of my bedroom, thrown by an unknown power, a bar of chocolate hits my head, and lands in my lap. As if that's not enough, the fridge turns around, and to the dreaded sound of metallic stomping, it leaves the room. I can't take this anymore. I sink back into the pillows, hoping to wake from this dream. Ugh, that was a weird dream. I hope I'm not losing my mind. I scratch my head and rub my face, trying to wake up. I feel something sticky on my hand, and as soon as I open my eyes, I realize something's wrong. My bed sheets are covered in something brown, and so are my hands, my face, and pajamas. I jump out of bed and quickly remove my clothes in a panic. I know stress can have many effects. I heard about similar disturbances in sleep, but this... If that wasn't bad enough, there's something sticky on the bottom of my foot, too. I raise my leg, hopping to try and stay balanced, and catch my foot. Ooh, it's a 
dirty chocolate wrapping. I must have eaten it subconsciously while dreaming about that damn fridge. I know about sleepwalking, but sleep eating? Does that even exist? What a mess. Hoping that the chocolate won't leave a stain, I get the washing machine going as quickly as possible. So I hope nothing in here plans to talk to me today. I smile and blush, immediately ashamed of being amused by my own joke. I walk out quickly, trying not to overthink the fact that the washing machine sounded... angry. Living without my father taught me to be frugal. Sure, I got this apartment and his shop for free, but I have no idea about running a business. Better safe than sorry. After discovering the melted leftover chocolate still in its wrapping, I decide to put it straight into my fridge. I can always eat it at midnight, right? Stepping through the kitchen door, I hesitate. I'm not sure if I'm ready for another interaction with my fridge. I realized how pathetic I must look like, afraid of my own household appliances. So, are you in the mood to talk today? I tried to make that sound like a joke, but my voice got rather serious unintentionally. Hey, uh, I just wanted to put this inside of you. Will you let me do it? I'll be gentle. I realize how that sounds, and I'm immediately torn between endless shame and a burst of laughter. My face turns red and sweaty. Of course, please do it. That same sweet feminine voice definitely coming out of the fridge. I'm mad. I must be mad. Run away. <laughs> I feel a little bit dizzy as I leave the kitchen and lean against the wall, breathing heavily, trying to pull myself together. I could keep telling myself that it's stress, that all those nights spent at work have finally caught up with me, and that's the cause of these strange hallucinations. But that voice was real. Deep inside, I know it well, but I try not to let these thoughts take over my mind. I feel like I'm hanging on the edge of sanity in desperate need of distraction to clear my head. I should probably go to work, or at least decide what to do today. Since the day my father passed away, I've been running his business all by myself. It's a huge responsibility, but at least I'm the master of my own time. It's up to me if the shop is open or not. Just like father, I'm not a fan of this whole weekend idea. Why waste a day when you can be productive instead? Of course, I'm not a robot. I sometimes take a day off to visit my friend Kazuya and play games just like we did in the old good days. It's been a while since I've been around though. To be honest, I can't remember the last day I even took a break. That explains this whole fridge hallucination thing, I guess. Unfortunately, I don't have time to work and visit Kazuya at the same day. Being the only person running such a huge shop full of household appliances, I have to stay late to do all the paperwork and make sure everything is alright. There's barely any time left to read a book or clean the house. How did my father manage to do all this by himself? Why didn't I help him? It's time to decide what to do. Going to work would be the most responsible idea. That's what my father would do. I'm not feeling well right now, but there is no more sick leave in my life. I have to grow up and face it. Growing up, that also means not keeping everything to myself and learning when to ask for help. Kazuya, my best friend, has always been there for me, so I should maybe tell him about what happened, although I'm not sure how he would react to the fact that I can hear fridges. Maybe he could actually help me. Sometimes I prefer just to stay home and relax, but I'm not sure if I want to risk another conversation with my fridge. Not now. I'll give myself a day or two to find out if I'm really insane before I start thinking about professional help. Let's not overreact yet. Go to work. Yay, responsibilities! It wouldn't come as a surprise if I said I didn't like my job. Of course, no one ever forced me into doing it, but I've grown up enough to know I should be thankful to my father and accept his heritage. I owe everything to him, and even though he's gone now, I still feel like I shouldn't let him down. The store is just a few blocks away from my house, and on sunny days I walk there to calm down and relax. Well, I mostly do that when my nightmares get me out of bed early, although last night was an exception. I actually overslept, so I grab my bike and get cycling. Early morning rituals, open the blinds, dust down the equipment, sweep the floor. It's not a huge retail store, although the customer's area is just a part of the building. The other side is a huge storeroom with my father's workshop where we keep used and broken appliances. Fortunately, father taught me how to make minor repairs of household equipment, 
So I can always earn money by reselling some junk people leave here. Fascinating, right? Well, there's one thing that makes me a little more cheerful about coming here, and by thing, I mean person. Wait, that sounded wrong. But yeah, there is a certain girl in the neighborhood that I left her fridge with me, it had broken down, and she couldn't afford a new one. She was really nice to me when we spoke, and it's pretty rare for customers in a boring store like this to actually smile. Damn, her smile. She's a little bit tomboyish, always wearing a baseball cap with messy hair underneath, and damn, that smile of hers. I haven't finished the repairs on her fridge yet, but I like to imagine her coming here for small talk. Small talk about refrigerators and washing machines. Hey, what else can I hope for? I open the front door and immediately get slapped by a newspaper thrown by the paper boy. Thanks. I sigh and peel the paper from my face. I peek at the cover and suddenly my heart skips a beat. It's her. The baseball cap girl. 21-year-old woman missing. Yuki Honda disappeared on her way to work last Friday morning. She was last seen by her friend in the region of Tonkatsu Bento near the local high school heading towards her workplace at Soba HQ. She was wearing a blue baseball cap, plain white t-shirt, and blue jeans. If you have any information about the woman, please contact the police at phone number... What? She's missing? She was last seen near my store, so whatever happened to her, it must have happened in my neighborhood, but how? Nothing really happens here. We're probably the safest district in the city. I feel goosebumps all over my body. I didn't even know her name. Yuki. Oh, dear Yuki. Although it's terrible, I guiltily can't help but feel a little excited. Nothing ever happens around here. Hell, maybe I can ask around, talk to some of my customers, and help find her. I can already imagine next week's front page. Shop owner saves baseball cap girl. She also accepts his proposal. Me, shaking hands with the mayor. Boom! Ugh, it's a good thing I don't have a weak heart. It almost jumped out of my chest there. I look up to see the source of the sudden noise and find the delivery man bringing new equipment. He seems very confident in the packaging material, judging how carelessly he hauls the packages from his truck. Hey, it's fragile. Please don't sign here. I scowl at him angrily, but he barely even reacts, apparently more interested in his phone than me. I sigh, sign everything, and ignore him while carefully moving the heavy boxes inside. Alright, what do we have here? Two new microwaves, a used freezer, a blender, a few compact mini fridges, last year's models. I start unpacking and making sure that damn delivery driver didn't cause any real damage to the appliances. I can't help but notice a delicious smell, something resembling strawberries and cherries and pepperoni weird oh i'm so hungry now that i think about it apparently last night's chocolate catastrophe wasn't enough i need to call takeout before hello there another heart attack i can't have more than two per hour my first reaction is to frantically look through all the new appliances searching for the source of my latest mental breakdown it's probably one of those damn mini fridges oh i swear if one of you starts talking to me here dumbo behind you I turn around and my jaw drops. It's a girl, a new customer probably. My thoughts drift away to Yuki immediately to try some comparison, but I don't seem to remember her face anymore. This girl is radiant. Her perfume reminds me of something really tasty and oh man, she looks even more delicious. I use all my strength to close my mouth, then even more to try to start a conversation. What, what can I help you with? My voice sounds so high-pitched and weak, she may think I'm a hamster. Yep, here we go. She grins at me like I've just told a good joke. Uh, nothing really, just passing by. Wanted to check all the cute junk you have around here. Don't mind me. She casually jumps away and sits on one of my precious Ma Mecha Helper 3000 washing machines, kicking it with her sneakers as she waves her legs. She looks around, focusing on each and every piece of equipment I have in my store. She leans towards the washing machine right next to her and proceeds to scratch at one of the manufacturer's stickers, still looking around curiously. I want to stop her from destroying my belongings, but her... her shorts are cropped so high, I... So is this all you have here, Dumbo, your little paradise of kitchen junk? She leers at me, still scratching with her long, polished nails. What a meanie. No, it's not. I have a workshop here, too, where I repair everything that others didn't care for. I try to make that seem like very important, honorable stuff to do, but she doesn't even seem to be paying attention. 
Suddenly she jumps off and comes closer to me, swinging her lovely hips as she approaches. Her smell overwhelms me. I can't... So you have more of this junk in the back, huh? Any special backroom junk for your beloved clientele? I gulp very, very loud. Oh dear, don't screw this up. Trying my best to lower my voice as much as I can. It depends on what kind of junk you're interested in. I try to wink, but all my face can do right now is something resembling a nervous tick. The flirty expression washes off her face. Now she looks like she pities me. No, please no. Never mind, I guess. I was just passing by. Goodbye then. She rushes outside and disappears out of my sight before I even realize what happened. I breathe heavily for a few seconds and run towards my washing machines, checking the stickers. Huh. She was scratching at it for some time, yet I can't see any damage. Good, then. At least my equipment is saved. Can't say the same about my dignity. Fortunately, there were no other unexpected events throughout my workday. I tend to valve normality more and more these... Value normal... Why did I say valve? Value normality more and more these days. Am I getting older or what? I close the shop, count the money, and clean up the place a little bit. The sun starts to set as a final sign that I should probably go home now, but I rarely do that at this hour. Home means loneliness and nothing to occupy myself with. When my father passed away, I spent whole nights in the workshop here trying to focus on repairing appliances instead of thinking about how much my life sucked. The workshop is a special place to me, but not in a positive way. It's a place to spend time when I feel lost and depressed. The only way to keep myself sane and refocus my thoughts on something productive. My little personal purgatory. I open the workshop door and a cloud of dust hits my lungs, causing a bad cough. Damn, I should do something about the mess in here. I look around, a desk with an old PC, tons of repair tools obstructing its keyboard, a coffee mug with a cloud of mold popping out of it, boxes full of forgotten documents. Oops. Uh, the huge room is cluttered with old fridges, washing machines, and microwaves, some of them totally ruined, others covered with blankets, resembling old sick people quietly accepting their fate. Wait, am I personifying items again? Brain, please remind me to not do that. Smiling, I admit to myself that this company is far better than any other I've met today. At least they don't talk. Maybe it's because they're mad at me for leaving them here. Do they feel offended? Well, let it be this way. I enjoy the silence quite a bit. I stop smiling when my eyes focus on a fridge on the other side of the room. The blanket covering it has holes, letting dust fall in and settle on its top. I throw it to the side, coughing again. This fridge belonged belongs to the baseball cap girl, to Yuki. I wonder where she is and if she'll ever come back for her fridge. Even if she doesn't, damn, why do I even think about it that way? I still feel obligated to repair it. It's not in perfect condition, but I'm sure I can do something with it. Let me just open it and see. Ugh. It won't budge. I know I've opened it before. What's happened since then? Maybe it's the moisture in this place. I pick up some tools and try to open it using a little bit of force, but it remains tightly shut. I don't want to cause any damage, so I give up. Well, let's start the repair from the back, then. Ah, oh, my phone's ringtone is so loud. I check my pockets in panic, finally grab the smartphone and look at its display. Oh, not him. Not now. Masato Ibiki, former business partner of, my, partner of my father and now yet another pain in the ass I have to deal with. He doesn't just own the land this store stands on, but also invests money in it, all for a small cut of the profits. Considering the current economy and my credit rating, this guy is my only hope. A relationship worth cultivating, or rather one I'm forced to cultivate. I answer the call hesitantly. Why, hello there! What a pleasant surprise! You actually picked up your phone! A surprise? Surprise? I always answer your calls, you bastard! Ugh, I can't say that out loud. I have to behave. Expecting me to get angry, you won't get it. Good evening, Mr. Ibiki. How can I help you? Well, I thought you'd know. It appears to me like you have a business plan for the quarter due to tomorrow. Yes, it's done already. Actually, I can deliver at any time. Splendid! Alright, so how about you come over tonight in, let's say, two hours. I'll order some dinner and then we can look at this plan of yours. You greasy, condescending son of a... Alright, that sounds wonderful, Mr. Beaky. I'll be there on the dot. Let's hope so! Hope to see you then! 
breathe deeply, breathe deeply, in and out, keep cool, calm, and collected. Let's hope so, huh? You should hope I'm not taking my plan and shoving it up your... Wait, what? Is there someone in the store? I thought I locked up before visiting the workshop. I look around, no one's there. Oh, well, I'm hearing an, enough strange things these days. Let's pretend this was just an appliance acting up, another patient for the workshop. But that'll have to wait. Now I've got to make sure that I actually do have a business plan for tonight. Time to get to work. Time passes. All right, I need a drink, guys. One second. Ooh, that was exhausting, but I'm done. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. In fact, this was a perfect opportunity to use logic and reason along with my imagination for something really productive. It was fun. Damn, am I growing up? Anyway, I know Ibiki doesn't really take me seriously at all, but he'll have a hard time disagreeing with my plan. It will really improve the store's bottom line. I think this will be a successful evening. If I manage to get there on time... Shit, I've got to hurry. <laughs> Mr. Ibiki lives in the outskirts, far away from the rush and noise of the city. The mansion lies mostly in the shadows, but is still as impressive as I remember it. Unfortunately, it's not the time for ad admiration. It's 9.55 p.m., and for some reason, I'd rather show up half an hour early for an appointment than be just a minute late. So I rush to the door, adjust my tie for the last time, and ring the bell. At first, nothing happens. I'm not sure if letting me wait is part of a beaky strategy, or if walking through the entire mansion just takes a lot of time. Maybe it's both. But well, after what feels like an eternity, the door finally opens and I'm presented with Mr. Ibiki's smug smile. Well, who do we have here? Welcome to my humble home. Oh god, that's disgraceful, even for you, Ibiki. Thank you for the invitation, Mr. Ibiki. Mind if I come in? Oh, not at all, please. I have ordered us some first-class sashimi. It should arrive in just a few minutes. How about we eat and talk a little about how things are going for you, how you've managed to settle into the daily routine, which is surely a, a challenge for you. After that, I'll have a look at the documents you brought me. I'd like to punch you in the face so much. I would like to thank you for inviting me to dinner, Mr. Ibiki. This sounds like a good plan. He shrugs off my compliment, which gives me time to take in the dining room, dominated by a huge table with places set for two people. Please do take a seat. Thank you. I thought Ibiki wasn't married. Why would he need such a huge place? Well, I guess for him, it's not what he needs that's important, just what he can get. We start with some small talk, a warm up for the battle ahead before we are even remotely done talking about how any about how inappropriate the weather seems to be for this season the doorbell rings again oh it seems our dinner has arrived i'll bring it over if you'd please head over to the kitchen and get us a bottle of wine would you i took it out of the cellar this morning and put it in the refrigerator by the time we get to it it should be the perfect temperature he waves over to a door which i assume leads to the kitchen i nod and head towards it while a beaky leaves the room from what I've seen so far, I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. Everything in this place is massive, and it looks as if you could prepare food for a whole army here. Everything is very modern, especially the, the appliances, and I'm pretty sure you got nothing from my store. Oh man, that fridge. We've never sold something as advanced as this. Totally out of range of our usual customer base. Look at that thing. Glossy black, tall, and some LED lights grace the front below the door. Probably useless, but hey... Style over substance. Ugh, please now, keep calm. I'm not even sure who I'm addressing, me or the fridge. I reach for the handle and pull the door open, revealing a whole lot of almost nothing at all. Three bottles of wine, some insta-food, which I wouldn't have expected, and a lonely slice of pumpkin pie. I randomly pick one of the bottles, as I seriously don't know much about wine. Pretty sure that Mr. Ibiki will draw his own conclusions from that, but come on. It's not like you have to be a wine expert to run a store, right? As I reach for the door to close it, the door of the freezer compartment suddenly springs open. Startled, I step back and watch in shock as the whole area around the fridge is quickly swallowed by a mist caused by the temperature difference. What a powerful freezer! Oh shit, I gotta do something before I get into trouble. And we wouldn't want that now, would we? 
I almost dropped the bottle of wine hearing this voice. Oh no, please, not again. As the blood quickly escapes my face, a figure emerges through the mist. Still just being a silhouette, I can clearly see the proportions. It's a woman with waspy hips and legs that seem to reach all the way up to the heavens. As she emerges from the mist, her appearance hits me like a blow to the heart. Smoky eyes and plum red lips framed by flowing hair, an elegant and pompous dress which shrouds yet still emphasizes every little detail of a perfectly proportioned figure. Not breaking eye contact for a split second, she nearly floats towards me, almost casually hitting the door of the freezer with a graceful swing of her hips, putting an end to the continuous flow of mist threatening to engulf the whole kitchen. So, you are Masato's little partner, hmm. Interesting, very interesting. Her cold eyes seem to scan me thoroughly, sending shivers down my spine. The way she addresses Mr. Ibiki and the way she's dressed, she's clearly no maid. Could she be Ibiki's wife? May he be married after all, or maybe his girlfriend? Don't just stand here, do something. Uh, yes, I'm... I am. Uh... I'm sorry, Mr. Ibiki didn't mention... Oh, of course he didn't mention me. How could he? That's all right. I'm Ume. It's a pleasure to meet you. How could he? What a curious thing to say. Why couldn't... Oh my, she's still coming closer. Not the most talkative type, are you? Hmm, but a good selection of wine, I see. Be careful, though. It may go straight to your head, and I'm sure you don't want things getting out of control. Or do you? I'm electrified, unable to move. I notice that while she's running her fingers over the label of the bottle, I'm desperately holding on to like a lifeline. I feel absolutely nothing at her touch. It seems... Wait! Not the most talkative type, are you? Hmm. Uh, how do we go back? Uh, wait. Her fingers are clearly reaching through the glass. This woman, Ume, is not real. The realization hits me like a slap to the face. Of course he didn't mention me. The, w the way how she emerged the way how she emerged from the mist. That's grammatically incorrect. <coughs> the way in which she emerged from the mist. But she did close the door of the freezer, didn't she? She's oh god, help me, she's another one, but she's also standing right in front of me. How is this possible? Is it the stress? Have I gone completely insane? Both? What do I do? Turn around and leave the kitchen. In a desperate attempt to preserve my sanity, I turn around, not saying a single word, and storm out of the kitchen. I have no idea how long I spent in the kitchen, but luckily it passed unnoticed. A beaky is just about to prepare a huge mixed sashimi platter and my mouth starts to water. I'm desperately looking for something to keep my mind off whatever just happened in the kitchen and this food just looks like the most delicious escape I've ever seen. Oh man, what now? What the? Is this a prank? I put down the bottle of wine as Abiki looks up to me. Oh, there you are. I see you've made your choice. Interesting. Honestly, I don't care anymore. All I want is to eat and get this evening over with, but it's not going to be so easy now, is it? As we proceed to eat, Abiki immediately begins to interrogate me. So, how are things looking over at the store? Oh, pretty good. I can't complain. Still have a steady stream of customers, and they seem to be very happy. <clears throat> Oh, that's good to hear. I imagine it was hard to pick up where he left off, getting acquainted with the customer base, digging into all this paperwork, no problems with it at all. No, you knew my father. He was an orderly man, and he treated his customers with the utmost respect. Continuing his work couldn't have been easier. It just needed a little bit of dedication. It was no big deal. That was a bit cold, yes. The way Abiki fails to show any sensitivity towards the passing of my father is just downright pissing me off. I meet his eyes and I see his expression shifting slightly. Is that a spark of recognition? Maybe he feels that he has to test me, make sure that I'm good for this job, and yes, feelings have no place out there. Maybe I misjudged his intentions. 
As the end of dinner draws near, topics get more casual. Mr. Ibiki gives up asking me about the work and I'm happy about it. Of course, there is still the business plan, but my confidence is growing immensely. Well, that was good. Now how about we have another glass of wine while we look at your project? Sounds good to me. I grab the folder from my bag, open it slowly, and present it to Mr. Abiki. I hold back myself from commenting anything as I don't want to appear too defensive. I think everything speaks for itself, but I'm also ready for his questions. As Mr. Abiki grasps the content of the documents I've presented to him, he begins asking questions, trying to poke holes in my strategy. Despite the events of the evening, or maybe because of them, I manage to keep my mind focused and answer the best I can. With each answer I give, Mr. Beaky seems more and more satisfied with me, even though I still think it's a long way until I can call this respect. Eventually, we reach the final details of my plan. Well, that looks good, really good. I think I'll continue my investment and maybe even add a little extra. There is some real potential here. Thank you very much, Mr. Beaky. I appreciate your kind words. Your father taught you well. You should be proud of yourself. Now, I don't want to hold you up for much longer. It's getting late, and I'm sure you'll have another hard day ahead of you tomorrow. Here, let me bring you to the door. Or should I call you a taxi? That won't be necessary, Mr. Abiki, but thank you. Have a good night. I feel that this relationship could become much better. As I climb on my bike, I feel confident, happy, and almost certain that I'll have a good sleep tonight. Yes, this was a good evening. <clears throat> Another night passed. This day started with an unexpected call from City Hall. Apparently, there's a pigeon infestation in the area where my shop is located. They apologize for the inconvenience, but the streets are closed for now. They can't risk another epidemic. I think about people in hazmat suits doing shoe shoes all day. I smile at this thought, but my humor immediately dies after I realize a beaky won't care whether there are pigeons or not. I would most likely be scolded for not opening the shop during the apocalypse, or pigeocalypse. Anyway, I should probably use this day to visit Kazuya. I haven't done that in a while, and I could probably use some relaxation in video games. I was sure I could cope with everything myself. Apparently this was a mistake. It's time to confide in a friend, the best one there is, Kazuya. Well, he's the only friend I've ever had. However, this could be an even bigger mistake. Huh? Is my brain switching to autopilot? I'm not really sure how, but I have a phone in my hand, and familiar voice comes from it. Hi, uh, what's up? Kazuya, it's, uh, it's me. I know, caller ID. Remember when the 21st century happened? What can I do for you? I know this may sound absolutely crazy. It's, uh, I mean, I think I'm losing my mind. Hey, calm down. Tell me what happened. Nice and slow. A moment of hesitation. I'm not thinking straight. Can I really tell him what happened? Everyone already looks down on me anyway. A hopeless and whimsical dreamer. I see myself wrapped up in a straitjacket already. But then again, Kazuya is my best friend. We could always talk about everything. And on the other hand, he doesn't really take anything seriously. He lives by a simple philosophy. Problem, party hard. Bigger problem, party even harder. You still there? I'm really worried here. Tell me what's up. He sounds honestly concerned. Maybe I should tell him the truth. You wouldn't believe me anyway. Try me. I'm hearing... Uh, it's been talking to me. What? The sudden raise of his voice catches me off guard, and in it I can hear an honest feel of desperation. He is concerned. A good friend. It's my fridge, Kazuya. It's been talking to me. A moment of silence. You were right about one thing. Huh? What's that? I don't believe you. I have to hold the phone away from my ear while Kazuya laughs uncontrollably. I'm not sure if I should feel ashamed, offended, or concerned. I can't blame anybody but myself for sharing something as crazy as this. I'm not even sure I believe it with a goofball like Kazuya. But this is one of the most terrifying experience of, experiences of my life. I had to tell someone. Finally, the laughter fades. I'm sorry, mate, but you have to admit this is absolutely hilarious. I'm glad you see it like that. I wish I could. Hey, with all that you've been through in the past few weeks, I'm not surprised your brain is taking a vacation in the bizarro dimension. What you need is some serious downtime. Oh, goody. Here we go again. Come over. Let's talk. Have a drink. Don't worry. It's on the house. I'm not really looking forward to drowning this whole thing in alcohol. Even if I'm just imagining things, I want to get this sorted out professionally. 
Then again, I did just call Kazuya, didn't I? My eyes wander through the room and eventually rest on the fridge. On the other hand, right now, everything else seems to be better than another chat with her. God damn it. I'll be there in a minute. I don't need a response. In one fluid motion, I end the call, put the phone in my pocket, and grab my jacket while storming out the door. It's a 15-minute bike ride to Kazuya's place, and I try to keep my focus on pedaling. I don't want to think about it at all. Hell, maybe drowning all this in sanity and booze is exactly the answer I'm looking for. The world around me becomes a blur of indistinct visuals and shreds of sound buzzing through my head like a swarm of angry hornets, enough to keep me from thinking straight. I have no idea how I made it to Kazuya's apartment without having an accident, but I did it. We've got a record here, barely 10 minutes. I'm sweating like a pig in a bacon factory. Well, at least I know Kazuya won't mind that at all. He isn't the cleanest guy either. And sure enough, shortly after ringing the doorbell, I hear some rustling and what sounds like a week's worth of dishes crashing onto the floor, case in point. Suddenly, Kazuya opens the door, almost ripping it from its hinges. The smile on his face is strangely familiar, slightly crooked, and his eyes gleam like those of a psychopath. What on earth have I gotten myself into? Damn it, at this point I don't care anymore. It can't get any worse, I hope. Hey, I must say I didn't expect you this early. Did you take the company helicopter? Come in, let's have a chat. Thanks, Kazuya. I don't mind his remark about the alleged luxury I'm apparently living in, but while he leads me through the mess that barely resembles a living room, I start to realize how he could get envious of the life I was living. Though right now, I would not have anything against changing places with him. I clear the couch of TV remotes, game controllers, and a plastic bag of questionable contents. I sit down just in time to see Kazuya plunge down next to me, holding a can of beer in front of my face. He looks at me, waiting patiently for me to take a long sip, probably counting on the fact the booze will loosen my tongue. So, can you please tell me what happened step by step? The beer works quickly, sending a warm feeling of fuzziness throughout my whole body, but I still maintain enough self-control not to make a fool out of myself. But then again, this whole thing was probably just me going insane over the events of the past few weeks. I want to be rational, especially since he still has that awful smile on his face, and it's growing wider with every passing second. All right, guys, I actually need to end this episode here. I hope you're enjoying Cold Hearts, the demo. If you are, tell that like button you want to smash. And don't forget to subscribe. You stay you, I'll stay me. Droogie forever. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Later.